Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here, working with our new Studio Strings range, which has been kind of quite a big learning curve for me because basically for the last 10 years, I've been predominantly using strings libraries that have a, a big reverberant hall on them, recorded at the hall uh, studios. Do we need another strings library? Well, I say it's like saying to Carlos Santana, do you really need another guitar? I think that there's different libraries for different seasons. And for me, after you know using chamber strings and symphonics so kind of vigorously for the last five or six years, it's simply I want a different sound to work with. And what I found very interesting about this uh, piece in particular was that I, I went in to do a certain style of piece and it really kind of urged a slightly different way of writing, a different way of working. With these epic sounds, it's very easy just to sit on that and just go, that sounds massive, it moves us. Whereas with this, there's nowhere to hide. You have to work harder as a composer, and I welcome that. Anyway, let's dive in. So basically, I set myself the task of writing something in three acts to give a real sense of versatility. The first part you may recognize, I've basically taken the piece that I used on Tundra to demonstrate that, you know, this can do a bit of that beautiful Scandi stuff, but with a much finer, it's like you can really see the kind of patina and the threads, uh, can move into something that's very passionate, almost John Williamsy in its kind of lyricism. And then we go into, I think, a very interesting kind of staccato -y or sonato package with a big kind of paddy end. So let's just kind of go through it track by track. I guess the first thing I did, which was fun, is being unfamiliar with this library. What I did is I kind of set up these template multis. So if we look here and then and with the violas, it's basically most of your options with exception to the FX and runs and, and, and glissandi uh, stuff. So we've got our core techniques, our decorative and our legatos. So basically you bring up a panel and you've got all of your articulations for that section in front of you. And that was really handy for me to find all of these little hidden gems and to kind of jump on stuff. You will see though, as a consequence, that my housework is less than desirable. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do is create a very engaging sound uh, with the intro. So I wanted to use a combination of articulations and that is what I would do on the day. I would divisi up not just notes and parts but also the playing styles in order so that we can hear these individual uh, actors if you will. So I started as usual with me with a set of drones and I used the Super Soltasto patch which you're becoming more familiar with. We introduced it with Tondra and it's in Hans Zimmer strings and stuff. And again, I love hearing this in different guises, different section sizes, but also different rooms. And I think this is very effective. And I also use the second violins, I believe, up an octave. And I'm using a kind of a standard mix for everything. Uh, this is the pro version. I've also done a core version linked below. What I'm using is the close mics and the outriggers. The close mics give us a very direct sound. The outriggers give us more of a wide sound. What I like about this selection is you'll see that the kind of the main players, the, the lead actors, if you will, the first violins and the celli are very much clear of where any dialogue would be. And this is again, something that I enjoy about using a dryer library is you can control control the panning so you get real separation and it's very very broad as well as having a kind of a, a, a relief sound um, which I think is going to be great for dialogue. So basically let me just freeze those. This is my way of basically meaning that anytime I jump into the arrangement because this drone runs throughout uh, it's going to run. So onto the flautando. As always, that's what I tend to start with to write. So I actually uh, programmed this in uh, live with both the first and the second part which is something like programmed that in and then literally just separated the two parts off into the first and the seconds. What I love about the way that Paul has produced this library is most of our flautando patches in our other ranges tend to be, you know, poco vibrato, if not senza. And with this, 
it's a little bit more expression. So I've really enjoyed writing with this because it has a, a little bit more of a, a sense of passion to it, which I find very interesting. So that's lovely. But I wanted to really enhance this sense of this kind of Scandinavian wispy kind of sound, T make use of the fact that we don't have this large hall obfuscating all of these different characteristics. So I doubled up with some harmonics. and then went for broke with the super saltasto sound as well. So let's have a listen to all three of those. The problem with that is we're, we're lacking the joining up a bit so that you would get with legato. It's gonna help when I put the reverb on. I'm gonna put that on in a minute. But what I thought I'd do is try putting the legato underneath. What I found was it gave that slightly more full-blooded sound that it was unwelcome. It was like, no, let's not get there too quickly. So what I actually did was created a couple of little scoops in the EQ. So let's listen to without. And then with. So I'm almost imitating a flautando with EQ, just making it slightly more, I don't know, mossy sounding. So let's hear all four of those combined. connecting a little bit more. And then the other thing naturally to do to really connect up the dots is to assign a reverb. Now, dry libraries is not a place for musical vegans. We need to put a bit of reverb on, even if it's just a short plate. And I was eager not to go, okay, well, I'm gonna make it sound like it's recorded in the hall. I'm not gonna imitate a room. What I love about the room in Air One is it gives us a sense of width, it gives us the stereo nature, also a little bit of relief, which again behind dialogue is fantastic because the music kind of sits here and back. And what I'm using is a quite an old fashioned uh, reverb, which is the Random Hall, which I believe has some kind of pitchy stuff in it, but it just seems to work as a slightly retro characteristic that I like, although this piece isn't retro. So let's listen to that back again with the reverb in. That little glissando there is not the greatest piece of programming. I think what I tend to do is write with all the parts in as opposed to in isolation. So you hear the little kind of bloopers when you kind of isolate like this, but you'll hear that when it's all together, it sounds okay. So I basically duplicated this sound, but with the second. So this will come in slightly here. So we'll start spreading the sound across. So it's just basically playing a harmony line. The octave you see there is the harmonics. So that bar eight moment is a little bit better. So that'll all glue together nicely. And again, I did this kind of flautando copy channel EQ there, just to give it a bit of, um, you know, just a bit of a mossy sound, you know, pull out that slightly more bold, full, normal texture. And then I moved on to a kind of answering section with our cellos. And this is when I really use the power of a dryer room to really articulate a lot more than is kind of common for me and use counterpoint and a real passion. If I take away this automation here, so you, you'll hear this, obviously there's that soft kind of Scandinavian style beginning and it's quite difficult to control the cellos. They really come in quite boisterously. It is a very passionate sound, the legatos. So what I did is I started with some harmonics and it just kind of cross fades out. And again, to kind of maintain this mossy characteristic, I doubled up the legatos with the flautandos. So let's have a listen to that. So instead of kind of just moving people with a big 
kind of massive chord that's scale and epic and wow, I'm actually having to articulate. I'm having to be slightly more poetic in my approach, which I'm very excited about. I then have some answering phrases with the violas, which sound... I mean, it sounds like people playing cellos up here. They are they have such a fat, rich, enormous sound. And for that, again, I'm doubling up the flautando and the legato. And I feel that the ear combination, the reverb and the ear's inability to kind of dig these things out, the legato transitions tend to work for both sounds. This is where the violas really come into their own. So that's a middle section that's very passionate. And then we move along to a slightly more thicker, richer sound. And again, I played these in in kind of twos, and then I greedily divided them up between, say, for the first two flautando lines there, so you can see there, the melody and the harmony, and then consordino to add a really bright, silky sound in, and again, their harmony. We've got some legatos and the super saltastos. So let's just have a listen to those. Just great, such a lovely sound. That lovely short, slightly platy reverb. I'm really enjoying that. And then the same, it says violas, but I basically recorded it on the viola part for some reason and then duplicated it up to the second. So let's have a listen to that. And that's when you can really hear that it's a different bunch of players playing different instruments. And this is you know, adding all of these sonic characteristics in. This is the beauty of having stuff recorded in sections. I also, at this point, introduce the basses. And the basses and cellos in this library have such a gnarly kind of sound to them. Absolutely awesome. And you'll see that I'm using different tracks for the different legatos, basically different points in the arrangement. I'm altering reverb levels, that kind of stuff. When I really want it to sing, I sometimes have to really encourage the reverb to reverberate more against the parts to give it that sense of passion. The room in Air One isn't going to do it as much for you as the hall. So this is why we're using lots of different duplicates of the same instruments, different volume settings, different reverbs to give you this kind of passionate dynamic that uh, we require out of this room. But what's great about the basses and the cellos is it's just got that real, it's like some skinhead with his forehead against yours going, come on in. Bit of a local reference that. And then we move along to our ostinato spiccato section here and basically I've really enjoyed the sound of the seconds. There's something, there's a hysteresis in the way that they're playing that uh, really matches my aesthetic. So let's have a listen to the first part. You feel that there's some humans there playing it, you know, kind of scraping away there. And there's a second part here, which I'm enjoying, which I'm kind of imitating a double stop kind of sound. Absolutely fantastic. And then I've got some duplications with the uh, firsts up here. Getting louder, more passionate as we go along here, getting more and more using the velocity, more building up the parts, the first, the seconds. For me, uh, I write music for TV, film and games, and I'm not a purist about the number of you know voices that I'm using. I haven't used the Divisi option. I'm looking forward to diving into that with this library, but I've just worked as I usually work, which is kind of duplicating tracks, building um, tracks up. And if I went back into this room with this band, I would layer this on top of this arrangement. So we get this kind of big, epic TV film sound, but with the detail and the non-coloration of the room. So we get total control. Uh, I introduce some pizzicatos here, which again, great, very defined. You don't get that in the hall at all. 
and we've got more cellos, more violas building through that section. And then finally, we've got our kind of epic end here, using some nice trills, and also making use of the effects, which haven't been spoken really about yet with this library. One glissando from the cellos and a run from the violas. And if it's not in the right key, you just simply uh, tune it on the contact interface. In fact, I've got a, a falling glissandi here. Let's have a look at that. And if I take the tuning off, not quite the right note, so I've taken it up to three. So this is just basically me rinsing out doubling up all of the chords, um, being very passionate, combination of legatos and non-legatos, lots of consordino, a really big climax, ending on a tutti spiccato uh, moment with that big glissando at the end there. And that's ostensibly it. I think if I have one main tip for working with a dry library, that would be that the whole point of working in a controlled environment, like a, you know, a recording studio, not a hall, not a church, is that it's about being able to control your microphone positions, your mixes. And I know that, you know, with these environments, you know, this is where Coldplay records, this is where, you know, uh, Muse records. It's all about giving you, as a producer, as well as an arranger, as an orchestrator, as an engineer, giving you the power to really control how these different interleaving uh, melodies, textures are working because you don't have, you're not pushing up an entire building. You're not EQing an entire huge kind of atrium. What you're doing is you're taking these specific elements that are pinpointed and colouring, changing, manipulating those. Thanks as always for watching. It's very exciting to be using this new part of the palette. You know, I think we've all been using these very reverberant libraries for 10 years and I'm sure we will continue continue for the next 10 years. This just gives me, as part of the Spitfire universe, an alternative writing tool. It's another guitar in my guitar cupboard, like, you know, using a steel instead of a nylon one day. You sit down and not only does it sound different, it makes you play different. When it makes you play different, you write different, and that's no exception here. I've been delighted that it's encouraged me to investigate my inner counterpoint. I always knew it was in there somewhere. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you like what we do, hit like. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. And if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up, plenty more Studio String stuff coming up, hit the little bell icon. See you next time.